but I can tell you that if I'm going to contribute, it's going to be a very small or narrow focus of what it is that I'm going to do. You know, give me like a two minute sort of overall arching idea, I guess. And where can I fit in? I need someone else to guide me to that, I think is the way I'm going to put this, right? Is here are all the things that need to be done, kind of like what we've, you know, done in the DEIB group. And I can go, yeah, you know what? I can do this here. I may not be able to do it three weeks ahead of time, but I will show up and I will be the go-to person when, hey, Shanta, I need something done. Great. What is it? Just give it to me now. Hey, Bob WP here, and welcome to the WordPress way, a do the woo podcast show. Hi, I'm your host, Birgit, and we are here with another The WordPress Way, where we dive deep into the heart and soul of WordPress, exploring the cutting edge and the current with the incredible people shaping its future. And I'm very thrilled to introduce you to Shanta Madwani, a multifaceted professional whose journey through the realms of technology and martial arts, and it's nothing short of inspiring. Shanta currently serves as a project liaison manager at Codable, and her career in tech is underpinned by a solid foundation in IT management, and she's no stranger to the WordPress community. Shanta has educated many through her role as a WordPress instructor at the Sheridan College and has shared her extensive knowledge at over 40 WordCamps. Beyond her professional life, Shanta is a dynamic individual with a third-degree black belt in karate, tai chi, and kupodo. Her passion for education, technology, and martial arts is complemented by hobbies that include photography and singing karaoke. Today, Shanta joins us to share her insights on diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging in the WordPress community, and to discuss her unique approach to both technology and life. Shanta, very welcome. Do you want to introduce you to our audience? Thank you very much. Um, most recently, I've, uh, I'm very proud that I am now a great aunt. I have. Aww. Uh, while we were at Cloudfest, which I know we're going to discuss, literally the first morning I got told that the first member of our next generation has been born. I don't have children of my own. I don't have grandkids, but I was just over the moon. So that's been one of my latest, uh, joys. Um, and, uh, when I'm not doing all of those other things, um, I, I'm usually with my, my brother, uh, who, uh, is autistic and has a number of other, uh, challenges. So it keeps me busy. I can't really imagine. And to, uh, preface this a bit, um, you and I, we attended to the cloud first and we are currently also working together in the DIB working group. Uh, so we are spending a lot of time together over crossing board because I live in Germany, you're living in Canada. And, um, yeah, and we are bonding over several topics. And, um, I would love to hear about more about your journey into the tech industry because, um, how we get you and did you get involved with WordPress and, WooCommerce and all the tech stuff. So uh, I was interested in computers when I was young itself. And uh, then I stepped away from it for a while. When I got back into high school, I started getting back into it again, hanging out with the guys in the computer room. Um, you know, I, I was not your usual. I, I was a bit of a, um, I think they call it a tomboy at the time. Uh and then I went away from that for a while, went to work for my father in real estate, which if you were with me in high school, they said, Shanta, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? And I said, I don't know, but I'm not going to work for my father. Ended up there for about six years. And then the worst breakup of my life was having to tell my dad, dad, I love you dearly, but I can't do real estate any longer. And I found myself playing with things like the network 
settings. The internet was just becoming a thing, uh, doing emails and, and such like that. And instead of doing the board reports that I was supposed to be doing, I was asking a bunch of questions like, what is an IP address? How does that work? And, and things like that. Uh, went to school and uh, did a uh, diploma in network administration and uh, web mastering, as they called it. And after a few other years, I'd stepped away from it again, uh, was still in technology, but again, focusing more on the IT management. Tried to get back into it once I'd, uh, I'd lost my position uh, during SARS uh, back in the day. And so uh, it was a very good friend of mine. I, I sat with her and I said, I don't understand. Like, wh where am I going to go now? And she says, well, we're renting an office from these guys who do WordPress. Why don't you try that? Oh, I said, okay. And I remember having lunch with her, walking over a couple of blocks. I was so inspired by it. I went to the bookstore and I picked up the WordPress 8-in-1 book. Do you remember those? The, dumb, the books for dummies. Yeah. I picked that up and I practically absorbed almost the whole thing. So that's how I got started. Wow. Really amazing. And how this uh, worked from being real estate and going over the curiosity about how networks are working. And it's um, kind of um, reminds me of myself. I was always curious how the things work behind the curtains. So um, I, I absolutely get that. Um, And as I mentioned, uh, you and I, we both attended to the Cloud for Hackathon uh, this year uh, and also the main conference. And um, besides that, we worked together on a project about um, improving inclusive language uh, in WordPress and also in WordPress project. Um, we met with a certain amount of people um, outside of the WordPress bubble. Um, based on your experience, how does WordPress event compare or how do WordPress events compare to CloudFest in terms of inclusion accessibility? I find WordPress is more inclusive. Um, based on our experiences, uh, I just found that um, they were more focused Or they, they figured that by giving someone accessibility or, or access to a particular service, let's say, that they might need, that they were in turn giving up something for nothing when others were paying for it. And so they didn't quite understand, no, this isn't about giving all the perks that went along with those higher paid tickets and, and whatever. This was simply to ensure that someone could be there and could have a level playing field with everyone else and not feel that they were excluded or holding somebody else back or being an imposition on anyone else. It, it allowed, it should allow them to be relatively independent of other attendees. I guess is the way I would put it. Yeah, yeah. As you know, I had my first-hand experiences with that, um, especially um, navigating uh, through the venue when you have to go um, in the higher-level grounds. Um, there was no signage, obviously, where maybe there's an elevator. Uh, the first day on the main event, I climbed the stairs, a two-story high clear stairs. And with my current uh, body issues, it's kind of difficult. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I learned when I arrived the plateau um, that there was an elevator. <laughs> But it was hidden and it wasn't uh, marked on the map, on the venue map. So it would be helpful to know for someone who has disabilities. Um, To see, okay, there's an elevator where I can join the other other stages. It's fine, and and for, this was the main event for the CloudFest Hackathon, which was organized by our dear WordPress um, community fellow uh, Carol Ollinger. 
And she really made sure that we feel included and really um, made sure that uh, the lunch is accessible and um, that people would may have issues to stand long in the line, uh, that we co could go a bit earlier before the lunch opens for any for everyone. So that's in the kind gestures which makes the world for someone with disabilities. And I'm eternally grateful for that. But also, like you did um, on during the main event, for instance, uh, you offered to go for me to the buffet and grab the food or grab some, some, some beverages. So you supported me during this time. And that is also really, really valuable uh, for someone um, who has issues to to navigate long crowds and uh, to have some some peer uh, who is really interested into supporting someone else and um i think the the other thing is if i recall and and i may be wrong about this even when we registered for the main event i don't even remember them asking if you had any dietary restrictions or if there was anything that they could do to make your uh your event, uh, you know, easier to attend, of uh, you know, with disabilities and and so on, which is something that is part of the normal practice when when we do a WordPress event. Um, the other thing I, yeah, I find a exactly. big difference, not necessarily just in terms of inclusion uh, and, and accessibility, was that first of all, all the WordPress people tended to find one another anyway. <laughs> and it, the the vibe is very different, right? In in a WordPress environment, it it feels like, hey, we're all there to help each other, to learn from each other, and so on. Whereas CloudFest is more commercially motivated, which is not a, a bad thing or a wrong thing, but that's what I mean by a different vibe. Mm -hmm, definitely. And still, even if we have a big commercial event, uh some basic level of inclusion and accessibility benefits everyone who attends also a very commercialized event. And, uh, and also when you take care more about inclusion by design, when you're organizing an event, uh, you also open the, com the, the event to those who may bring a lot of money onto the table, but they wouldn't attend because they don't know if their accessibility needs are met. So you're leaving a lot of money on the table when you don't include uh, and think about how to include and, and be more accessible by design. So, yeah. Um, speaking of um, being able or not able, is, um, you mentioned uh, you're currently... Um, Dealing a lot with the um, lawyer divergence, <laughs> like as I said, your your, your brother uh, um, has autism, and you also uh, are very fond about it. That you have also dealing with with um, managed ADHD, and can you share strategies that help you to to handle all your roles within the WordPress community, your job, your family? Um, what keeps you up? And uh, can you share some tips you gained over the years? The best source of information that I had, which oddly enough was the most frustrating, was from the university when I went. Uh, I was diagnosed with uh, inattentive type ADHD, which is one of the, the, the least common, but is more common among women. So I wasn't diagnosed until I was in my 30s because I went back to university later. One of the most frustrating processes was trying to get into the accessibility center and get all the paperwork done and so on. Just my intake took six weeks. So I was already behind again, so I was stressing about that. Anyway, but one of the best resources I had from there that gave me a lot of the, techno the, uh, the strategies was the technologist that they paired me with, who also happened to have ADHD. And so things like uh, getting all of your books on, uh, on an e-reader 
right? Or, you know, that's what we called them in those days. Anyways, so I was given an e-reader um, so that I didn't have to carry them around. But in those days, you also, um, a lot of the textbooks, you had to actually go to the publisher to get them. So you might have to buy a copy of the book, contact the publisher, and then have, you know, say that I am, you know, I need this for accessibility purposes because we're going to end up carrying all those books around. It's not like we, and I didn't have a locker either, so it's not like I could go. So it was about making sure that I had all of the stuff in one place, but I wasn't carrying it all around with me. Um, audiobooks are a big plus for me. Um, I was never a, a great reader. Trying to sit and read a book is very challenging for me. I don't enjoy it. I really don't. I enjoyed it, like, you know, watching movies and things like that. So even now, trying to fall asleep, I have to listen to an audiobook so that it occupies my brain long enough and, and, and well enough to go, you don't have to think about anything else. Just focus on the book and you're good. And that strategy has worked really well. In the workplace, uh, things like uh, speech to text has been like dictation tools is amazing. Um, unfortunately, I'm now on a Mac. And using Dragon Naturally Speaking, which I found was the best one, uh, is no longer available for me. So I'm still looking for the right thing, but um, there's quite a few tools out there. I just haven't found the perfect one yet. Um, focus time. Um, so try to, um, because it takes longer for me to dive into whatever it is that I'm doing. But once I'm there then I'm, I'm in, like I can go, I just have to get to that right level. And so trying to get into that is going to take me a while just to get into the focus point. So give me time to work on something and, and with less interruptions. Um, that's not always possible, um, in my work. So, and I find trying to schedule it for me just doesn't end up working out. It really doesn't. The last thing I would say, um, also is, well, two things. One is have a conversation with your your colleagues, the ones that you work with, and as well as the ones you report to. Um, I'm finding, especially in the last little while, um, I'm learning more about impulse control, which is the ADHD sort of key point, which is it's very difficult to gauge um you know, what everyone else has as a stopping point, I don't necessarily, you know, have that filter as always. So the last thing that you should do, I know I'm on a roll, you know, maybe just sort of go like this, like you need, you know, we, we need to wrap this up because I may go on for a while, but the worst thing you can do is interrupt me because I just need to get it out. Right. Like I, I know it's going to take a little bit longer. I know it's going to be overwhelming, but it's going to be worse if it interrupts because then I have to track back. I have to go over there and it becomes more frustrating for everyone involved because then it just looks like you're arguing. So that's one thing that I've learned, especially lately, is that I just need to get through it. Just let me, just let me talk it out. Just let me get, get it out the door and then just say, okay. That's it. Um, medication also has also helped. Um, that was another thing I learned when I got diagnosed is um, it's not always a bad thing. It helps me to read. Um, if I do have to read a document or read through a case or whatever, believe it or not, the meds help. Thank you very much for sharing your valuable tips. And I absolutely get that. Even if I'm a vivid reader, And I was reading, uh, back in the day, I was consuming books a lot. But lately I, I learned that it's hard to focus. Um, so it kind of telling you, I, and I understand how, what you're telling when, when you try to grasp a task or when you are thinking about a complex topic, you don't, um, work well or I don't work well. Uh, when, when I get interrupted in my thought process and it's kind of difficult to, to cut those ends or find the ends where loose ends 
to connect. So I absolutely get that. Well, the, the other the other part of that though is also is that what goes on in my head is that I'm not being listened to or I'm not being appreciated to, for what input I can give. And I know that that's not the case. Like at the end of the day, I know it's not. But in the moment, that's that's the sort of, you know, trigger that goes off in my head. I know you want me to stop talking. I know it. But the worst thing that you can do, because then I'll start talking over you again. I'm like, I just need to get this last bit out. And it just takes longer. Hey, Bob WP here. And if you're wanting to get your name in front of our listeners, we're looking for sponsors for the WordPress way. With a great mix of episodes featuring contributors that help to power what WordPress is today, to learning more about the growth of DEIB, which you are listening to right now, this is a show that will also bring WordPress Core to life. With options for 6 and 12 month sponsorships, you can be confident that your brand will be part of the WordPress way. Find out more, just go to dothewoo.io forward slash sponsor and let us know. Speaking of uh, having uh, consuming content, um, when you see our WordPress.org uh, environment and also the contributing part, um, you and I, we are currently uh, working in the DIB working group together and we started the project of overhauling the contributor handbook. And um, as a neurodivergent person, um, do feel the way I feel that we really need a bird's eye view and a journey, a, a contributor journey more visible uh, on WordPress.org. Uh, what are your thoughts about it? Because, and when I see as a long-term contributor to WordPress, I always struggle to find the information I'm looking for because it is somewhere buried in some great written handbook. I, I'm not belittling that, but um, I kind of don't feel that we have a clear path for our contributors, even if it's new approaching contributors or long-term contributors. What are your thoughts? What are your needs as a person, a neurodivergent person? What do you res um, expect, uh, expect as a contributor to find? I will say I do need a lot of hand-holding at the beginning. Um, I... You know, as, as much of a, um, I am actually a lot of a follower, right? I am better as a person that just shows up. You tell me what I need to do and I will do it. That doesn't mean that I don't need context or sort of an overlying, like, this is where we're going with this or this is why we're doing this. But, you know, if you need me to, it, it doesn't even have to be the, the main focus of the code or anything else. You know, like what we were working on was something that was sort of secondary that could be used elsewhere. Um, part of that challenge for me is also finding I'm always, I'm not even just building it really quickly. I'm building it knowing that I may have to use this again and again and again, which slows me down. But, um, so I, I think I, I wouldn't even say that it's hard to find because I probably, wouldn't go in that way myself. It's usually somebody like yourself. And I go, listen, you just need to explain it to me like this, right? If there's too much information, even if there is a path and I look at it and it's really long, then I may not do it. Um, you know, consuming video is not my thing. I don't listen to a lot of podcasts. I'll be honest. Um, but so I think I, I can't really speak to the contributor book itself, but I can tell you that if I'm going to contribute, you know, it's going to be a very small or narrow focus of what it is that I'm going to do. Um, you know, give me like a two minute sort of overall, overall arching idea, I guess. And, you know, sort of where can I fit in? I need someone else to guide me to that, I think is the way I'm going to put this right, is here are all the things that need to be done, kind of like what we've, you know, done in the DEIB group. And I can go, yeah, you know what, I can do this here. I may not be able to do it three weeks ahead of time, but I will show up 
and I will be the go-to person when, hey, Shanta, I need something done. Great. What is it? Just give it to me now. Courtney Robertson has learned this very well on contributor days. So God love her um, for uh, contributing to the training team. Right? So I haven't read all of the contributor books. I ha- and, and usually I'm, you know, if, especially if I'm traveling to something, I'm probably on vacation before that. Right? Um, and, and so I've, I've got enough going on otherwise that trying to read through all of that is going to be a challenge. So I just need the, you know, the bare minimum. And I know that when we did this in Greece last year, she says, no, I'm, I'm just going to ask you a bunch of questions as an educator. And you taught WordPress and things like that. I said, great. So I just said, you know, somebody says, oh, well, what team are you on? Training team. Okay. What are you doing? Don't know. I'm just following her, you know, that, that kind of an idea. And, and so, yes, it does take a little bit longer for somebody like me. I can't just go and read a document and, and expect to understand it. I will use that as an underlying reference and, and things like that. But I kind I kind of need like a, a quick intro to it, talking with someone to get there. I think is where I'm gonna sort of go with it. Mm. So basically, you're saying like some snackable content. Good point. To have some 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 digestible bites <laughs> of the big chunk, and I need it to be interactive. Like I can't just go and watch a video for five minutes, right? Because I need to be able to ask questions and I need to, oh, okay, you know, is this how it goes? And, and a lot of times when I'm saying things like that or I'm asking questions, it's also to make sure that I understand it, right? And I'm trying to demonstrate to the other person, this is part of the ADHD as well, I, I'm not trying to show off. I'm trying to make sure that I understand it. And yeah, part of it is to make sure that, you know, I, I can demonstrate to the other person, hey, yeah, I've got this. Nice. And <laughs> this is uh, really interesting, um, especially uh, learning how the um, intake form of someone else is um, someone can work more uh, diligently with uh, tags in combination with some video instruction. And as you mentioned, more you're more the person you you need more uh, guidance and the opportunity to ask questions. So. And other people more need their quiet room studying, but also not feeling overwhelmed by the informations. So, and that is, um, yeah. And then that's, uh, when I was approaching this idea uh, of overholding the contributor handbook, um, I had some people in mind just to, uh, guide them where do you do they find the information they may need then may looking for so and speaking of accessibility um we have great style guides our accessibility team did a great job already in outlining uh what does accessibility team mean and and, and how to implement it into your project uh but it's buried in their handbook it's not that not prominent. Yes. Thank you. And you are also currently co-organizing the WordCamp Canada. Yes. How do you approach and also address accessibility needs and inclusion for the WordCamp Canada? Because as you, maybe you can also, um, uh, explain the the audience what's so special about the WordCamp Canada in terms of inclusion. Canadians get confused, just in general, get confused with Americans and they think we're the same. And we're not. We have entirely different systems. We have challenges when we do things like shipping across the border or picking things up from the border. Um, that, you know, most people don't realize. And then there's a currency change and, and those types of things. So I'm looking at WordPress Canada or WordCamp Canada as a way of sort of identifying us as a separate country and a separate people. 
in not just the WordPress community, but just as a whole. And in terms of things like accessibility and, and inclusion, especially one of the foci that we've been looking at is the indigenous communities. We've been on the map, especially in recent years, because of a lot of the stories that have come out of Canada as a result. And so we wanted to make this a lot about where we've come from, right? Or where this country has come from, which involves our Indigenous communities, but it also involves things like our immigrant communities. And... And I'm going to do probably a horrible job at explaining this. My colleagues will probably have done a better job. Is that there is actually, um, I think it's more stories about two canoes, right? You know what a canoe is, right? You don't have a different word for it. Okay. It is actually a Canadian word. That's why I wonder. Anyway, but the idea is there are two canoes going down a river. And it's supposed to represent not only the indigenous communities and people that started there, but that the newer communities are coming with us. And I'm, I'll have to look it up properly, but that's sort of the idea. And that is a lot of what Canada is. I am the child of not one, but two immigrants. Different sides of, of the world, don't get me wrong, but that, and that's a lot of how this, this country is made. I would say that we haven't done as good a job as I was hoping we would do in terms of the indigenous communities and, and doing the outreach that we hoped to do because honestly, we're a small team. We've been struggling with getting people in to help us just to put the camp on itself. And I think that also speaks to the challenges around many camps is finding people that can contribute to just even a couple of hours a week. And so we've had to, I don't want to say pull back from it, but we haven't given as much effort to it because we've been putting all of our effort into just making sure we have a camp period. Right. And so that's not to say that we won't continue to do that. And hopefully, if this is a success, we'll make it even more of a thing next year and get it on the map, as it were. With regard to accessibility, I was even thinking about this as I was reading the question earlier, and we were having, I was having a conversation with some of my colleagues is that we are not. As volunteers, we may not be accessibility specialists, and we can only rely on whatever's in the handbooks and or what people bring to the table in terms of who our, our contributors are and, and who's helping. So we can't be expected to necessarily be experts at accessibility. So when it comes to Things like in invisible, dis like it's easy enough to say, oh, we need wheelchair access. Okay. And what is the distance? You know, like we were even talking about this from, from CloudFest. Well, what about distances? What about this? So it's not so much even invisible disabilities, but it's, it's not sort of classified, right? Even with invisible disabilities. Where, and this is where I think we need to rely on the community members to educate us. So if, if something isn't obvious and, and the form does help a little bit when you, when you are, are attending, et cetera, is there anything that we can do to, to make your experience better? I think that question is quite well worded. Um, and, and just let them tell us what they need. Do they need a space where they can go that's quiet, right? Because they're overloaded or whatever. Great. Tell us. You know, we'll make the best accommodation that we can. And the sooner we know about those, obviously, the better. So I think it's, it's incumbent also on the community 
don't just say that we didn't do a good job if that's the case. You need to tell us why we didn't, or better yet, tell us before it happens and educate us as to what you do need so that we can make that accommodation. We can't think of everything. Yeah, absolutely agreed. Especially to be open-minded as an organizer and also a volunteering organizer. As you mentioned, we can't be experts. Um, In everything. Yeah, even if we have maybe some guidance. Um, when I, I learned from the uh, current WebCamp Europe uh, organization team, they managed to get a special DIB training. They hired someone external to give them uh, over a course of some weeks um, workshops uh, on uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging and how to, to work towards a goal to be more inclusive. And um, that is something uh, we also at the work, DIB working group are working towards to um, create some basic guidelines as yeah, as a baseline um, to have something on hand so that we can learn each other. But also, as you mentioned, this, uh, uh, to listen to the people who have the needs, uh, but also encourage uh, someone to say, okay, I'm not feeling comfortable with that way. Can we change it? So especially as someone with disabilities, it often um, feels like, we are putting a burden on someone who's organizing an event. So we don't, uh, uh, or we have the fear to ask for accommodation of our needs. So that is also that we as organizer of an event, um, stay open-minded and invite them. They can share the experience and they are allowed to us and we want to encourage them. As you mentioned, to educate us. And um, yeah, that is something I currently l love about the WordPress community, that we are open-minded and caring for each other. Um, speaking of that, um, do we have some kind of a particular success story where DIB initiatives um, within a WordPress uh, project led more into a uh, positive impact? I can't think of one off the top of my head. I think just in general, um, sort of encouraging, you know, other women, other, you know, women of color and, and those especially with accessibility needs to present, to um, do those types of things, I, I think is probably the best one, but it, not one particular one comes to mind. Um, when I was thinking about this question, um, uh, my th first thought was about the uh, Diverse Speaker Initiative, which was introduced 10 years ago by Jill Biner. And also I see the trend on flagship events um, where some sponsors organize and put together the Pride Party or like at the Cloud Fund, the, the, the rainbow in the cloud. So that we celebrate our uniqueness, uh, but also our uh, different perspectives of life and identities. And um, it is also challenging, on the other hand, especially for those who are marginalized or more in marginalized groups um, to, uh, I think, a lot of fight uh, and it costs a lot of strength to advocate for oneself, especially for someone who already deals with disabilities, which is um, uh, which makes the, the already the, the day to day work even difficult already. And then we have to advocate for ourselves. So um, it is really, as you mentioned, just need to listen and, and find ways where we can educate ourselves to be an ally for someone else. Um, what um, do you feel is the um, approach to be an advocate without 
intruding someone else's personal space. Because even if we tend to to advocate for someone, but we don't want to uh, expose someone or making someone uncomfortable, what are your thoughts on it? Or do you have any tips or an experience from your first hand experience? Yes. Um, I, I'm laughing because um, I had uh, an experience with my one of my very best friends. And um, she uh, was, and, and this is public knowledge, so I'm not, you know, outing anybody, but um, she uh, finally told me she was transitioning. And I wanted to be the most supportive person that I possibly could. Yes, I don't understand everything. I need to be educated on a lot of things. And I found myself being the protector, right? So if something wasn't, you know, and, and she and I had an agreement because I, I said, I am a terrible liar. So like we set ground rules or, you know, we'd have sort of a briefing once a week and here's what happened here. And, you know, so how do I answer this? Or, you know, what's our party line or whatever. And I found myself stepping in and protecting them when they didn't necessarily need to be protected. They needed to be either their own voice or it didn't need a response. For example, in what we call their previous life, as it were, I remember we went to a restaurant shortly after she told me about this. And when the person came to the table uh, to take our order, they they said something along the lines of, oh, what would you, what would you ladies like to order? So she'd actually been identified as the gender she should be presented as, I guess is the best way to put it. And then I made some kind of a comment to indicate to the waitress that that wasn't as they were presenting. But what I realized afterwards is actually that was a perfect test. That was exactly where she wants to go. So my, and, and it's not like she got angry about it or anything like that. We, we dissected it later and I just went, Wow, it just blew my mind all of a sudden. I'm like, oh, right. So it's just like, hey, let's see what everybody else sees or thinks, right? So that was very, very early on. And that was one of the most awakening moments. But um, but even for myself, like, you know, even in my own place of work, I find that a lot of people feel like I need to be protected, but I don't. The best thing you can do is stand back and let me do it. And so even I am, am sort of a, a recipient. I don't want to call myself a victim. That's the wrong word to use. I am also a recipient of that same sort of thing. Um, because I think by letting it play out at least saying hey do you need any help no okay let me know because i will be the first one to charge in like a bull in a china shop the moment i see anything going wrong i'm going to lose my mind so it's it's also up to that person especially being the adhd person that i am that's what i'm going to do i'm going to go in full force and sometimes it takes the person that I'm either defending or whatever have you to say, it's okay, I got this. Wait, all right. And just run with that. So. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah. Do we have, while we're wrapping up our great conversation, even if we can go on and on and on. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, what are your takeaways for our listeners about um, dealing with neurodivergent traits um, in the IT tech world, uh, especially in the WordPress community? So there's a Slack team called the Big Orange Heart, which I haven't been as involved in. It's been pretty quiet lately. 
but um, I actually asked them to start up an ADHD channel. And so I, I know that it was going pretty well for a while. I haven't seen any activity on it lately, but that is a great place just in general for anybody who's sort of struggling or whatever, just to go there and just find, find your, your, your niche or just ask, even if it's just in the general area, just ask, um, specifically dealing with ADHD, I like, there are two resources, whether you are the person with neurodivergent, uh, challenges or the person working with them. There are two resources. One is a book called ADHD 2.0. It is one of the best books that I've listened to by, uh, Dr. Edward Halliwell, who is one of the foremost experts on ADHD. And it gives a lot of just little examples. Like when you say this, the ADHD person hears this. And so a lot of that rung true with me. So I recommend anybody um, who's, who's working with somebody in that, in that space, whether they're ADHD or not, if they're neurodivergent, it's, it's still a very good read. And the other one was, uh, especially if you're not sure if you are ADHD or you need to get um, there's a special, um, they've now released it finally on YouTube called ADD and Loving It. And it was produced by uh, a couple of Canadians, uh, interestingly enough, for public television, uh, probably at least 15 years ago now. Um, but it's really a, a good intro to go, you know, I've, I've thought about this, maybe, maybe not. And it's really entertaining. Uh, it's actually done by a couple of comedians. So they do a really good job of it. They're in television themselves and have ADHD. So um, I, I encourage anybody who's not quite sure, ha have a look at this. You'll love it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chanda. It's so dear to my heart. And I'm so glad that we found the time to chat each other with each other and also sharing some private moments also with the audience but also to inspire our audience and hopefully to educate about what um someone needs or how someone is acting maybe weirdly but in a quote unquote just adhd or another neurodivergent trait so thank you very much uh for tuning in today and also, um, thank you to the audience to, to listen to <laughs> our nice conversation. And we hope, um, this conversation sparked new ideas and also inspired uh, you to engage more deeply with our vibrant WordPress community. And also remember, DEIB isn't just about numbers and we want to make real changes and uh, to foster our belonging, feeling of belonging and respect for each other. And please keep the conversation going by sharing this episode and join us again next month as we continue to explore the important DRB topics and meet leaders driving the change. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our favorite podcast platform so you never miss an episode. Until next time. Keep pushing the envelope and doing WordPress the right way.